How's it guys and welcome back to Ultimate Exotics. So in today's video we're going to be talking about one of the rarest pythons in the world and that is the Angolan python or python antieta. And these pythons are super rare and they're super beautiful and in my opinion they're probably one of the most beautiful pythons that we deal with in captivity today. Um, the Angolan python as the name suggests they come from uh, southwest Africa um, from northern Namibia to southern Angola and they come from a very small um, region and, and they found nowhere else in the world. Um, their habitat consists of basically, it's a very dry and harsh environment uh, with very few plants, a lot of uh, rocks um, and rocky outcrops and um, also extreme temperatures. So their temperatures can be as cold as zero degrees Celsius, which is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit and can get as hot as 50 degrees Celsius which is about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So they can experience freezing cold and super hot days and they've adapted to this climate. Um, and it's such a harsh climate, it's incredible that these pythons have been successful in that environment. Um, in, a, in a little bit, we'll show you, um, uh, we'll give you a, a close up of this python. You can have a closer look at how beautiful and unique it is. And then also um, we'll teach you about the care of this python and then we have some super exciting news. Um, we have finally managed to breed the Angolan python here at Ultimate Exotics. And we're going to show you the female who's actually sitting on eggs right now. So let's start off about, uh, with taking a closer look at these cool Angolan pythons. So this is our male Angolan python. Uh, he's about um, close to six years old. And when you first see these Angolan pythons, you might think, these things look quite similar to a boar python. And although that is true, they do look quite similar to a boar python, they're actually quite different when you take a closer look. And the first thing that's very unusual is their bead-like scales. And they have such an incredible texture. And they've evolved uh, these bead-like scales um, because of their harsh environment that uh, gets some for, uh, little to no rainfall so sometimes they can go for a few years without experiencing any rain so what these um, beaded scales do is the python will sit there in the early morning um, and gather dew um, on their scales and then they will drink that uh, dew which has formed on their scales in the morning um, to to get water um, another thing is they also have quite large eyes like a almost like a bug eye so they have protruding eyes um, which helps them um, at night um, gives them better nocturnal vision so they can see better at night um, but yeah all around you can just see such a beautiful python real natural looking colors um, and they are just so so beautiful and he'll still get it quite a bit bigger but not too much bigger than this Look at those patterns, they're so unusual. And he's really calm and easy to work with, but to be honest, these have been, as babies, I don't know if it's just because of the line we're working with, but they were really aggressive. Some of my most aggressive snakes. But um, as they get older, like you can see, they do calm down quite a lot. My female does still hiss when we try and touch her. Um, but she doesn't really bite anymore. But as babies, they were very aggressive. I don't know if it was just yeah, our line they're working with. Maybe others have experienced um, their lines are a bit calmer. And um, due to their also having, they come from such remote areas, the gene genetic diversity um, in the Angolan pythons in captivity, it's quite small. So it's very important as breeders to try and make sure that we're using unrelated bloodlines when it comes to pairings. Um, to keep um, these captive lines strong and healthy um, because they're such a rare and unique python that we have to make every effort to make sure that the one the animals that we're breeding in captivity are cared for correctly and that their long-term future is secure beautiful snakes here you can see his big eyes very similar to a bull python but he is really cool. OK, 
Okay, so when it comes to the care of the Angolan python, it is pretty straightforward. The one thing that some people say is just keep them like a ball python. I personally wouldn't recommend that. We try to keep ours right in the beginning, the same way as our ball pythons. And it wasn't so ideal and we started to have a few issues. And then as soon as we changed the setup, we had better results. So um, to start off with the Angolan python, they reach um, lengths of about four feet, um, which is about 1.2 meters. So I would, I would recommend keeping them in a tub about that size. So we keep ours in rack systems. They, they, they like a rack system because they like um, quite dark, confined spaces. Because in the wild, they'll be in these rocky outcrops, really jammed up in between rocks and tight spaces, which ma makes them feel comfortable. So a rack system is perfect. And the size of the tub, I'll go for a larger tub. So something that provides a really good heat gradient. Um, which is about also four feet um, long or 1.2 meter long tub. That's the size tub we use. That's about um, two feet wide, which is about 60 centimeters wide and maybe a foot high, about 30 centimeters high. Um, so that kind of tub does really well. Uh, we have good ventilation in the sides of the tubs to keep the enclosure quite dry. Um, and golden pythons, they don't need any misting whatsoever. So a tub that's got good ventilation with a water bowl is all the humidity that they will need. Um, and just keep that substrate dry, make sure it doesn't get wet. They like dry, like we said, they come from a dry environment. We've never had any shedding issues with art and we've never had to spray them. Um, so that's quite important. Uh, when it comes to temperature, we use a heat pad under the one side of the tub, um, a small heat pad, and generate a hot spot of about 32 degrees Celsius. And then the other side of the tub needs to be at room temperature, um, which is uh, fairly cool. And then they can have a nighttime drop of a few degrees, no problem at all. Um, so that type of setup works really well. We do actually increase that hotspot uh, between 32 and 34. But as long as they can get away from that and they have a nice gradient in the tub, they then seem to do well. We also provide a nice plastic um, hide in the, in, the, um, in the tub, which then the, they always seem to go under that hide and curl up um, under there, uh, makes them feel nice, secure. And a tight environment and then like i said a clean water bowl and then as a substrate we just use wood shavings you can use aspen shaving uh, aspen bedding um, or just a good um, natural wood shaving is what we use and it works really well um, then when it comes to feeding um, and golem pythons they can get fat quite easily so just make sure you don't overfeed them um, what we do is we offer a small mouse um, once every 10 days um, to the youngsters and then as uh, for the adults we do a wiener rat about once every 10 days if they're starting to look a little bit overweight we might skip a feed um, which doesn't do them any harm they like I said they do put it away quickly and you don't want them to be overweight especially when it comes to breeding um, and then also we have noticed when people keep them in smaller enclosures um, and also if people try feed meals that are too large it seems that Angola pythons are quite prone to regurgitate and a lot of key other keepers that I speak to have experienced this problem. And like I said, when we kept ours like um, our ball pythons or in our ball python setups where it was quite a bit warmer, uh, we did have a few um, snakes that regurgitated, which just which is basically a sign that there's something wrong with that environment. Um, other other breeders have said that um, they, they 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 continue to struggle with the regurgitation. So I don't know um, if that's maybe another type of problem. I'm not too sure, but when we moved ours into the setup that we have now, they've done really well. So yeah, that's another thing, don't overfeed them, but otherwise it's quite a straightforward setup. So guys, like I mentioned earlier, we have some really exciting news and uh, that is that we have bred our Angolan pythons. Um, so our female is sitting on a beautiful clutch of eggs and we're about to go take them out, set them up into an incubation box and get them in the incubator. So Angolan pythons, they are becoming much more commonly bred in captivity, which is a great thing. Like I mentioned, it's very important that um, between breeders um, locally and internationally that we work together to make sure uh, that we, we have good genetic diversity with the pairings that we do to just keep our line strong and healthy to ensure a long-term uh, captive projects with the species. Um, but basically, yeah, we're very happy to breed them. We cycle them um, with, a, with just a nighttime drop. So our daytime temperature remained between 32 and 34 degrees. And then we just turned the, the heat off completely. Our room was maintained um, at nighttime um, between 
18 and 22 degrees, so that was their nighttime drop. Um, and then uh, the heat would then come on during the day for 12 hours from 6 to 6 and then go off at night. We did that cycle for about four months and in that time we introduced the male to the female and we noticed a few locks and then um, about uh, three months after breeding we saw ovulation and after ovulation about 21 days we had our eggs um, so we're very chuffed with that uh, so yeah let's go and have a look at these eggs all right guys so i'm super excited about this clutch this is really a, a dream clutch for us we've been waiting so long um, for this girl to do something um, like I said this female um, she's you know over five years going on to six years now and um, I've had her you know as a captive bred baby a tiny little baby and grown her um, and the male up and now finally the long wait is over and we have some eggs Look at that, Sham. She isn't very happy right now with us, disturbing her. But I thought I'd just have to show you. I'm so excited about this clutch. And we'll keep you updated on the incubation and the hatching. But this is just such an incredible species. Um, and we are just so proud to have produced them. And fingers crossed all will go well with the incubation. We're going to try the 32 degrees. And then hopefully about 60 days we should have some babies. So we'll keep a close eye on that. I'm going to leave her for a little bit longer and then we'll prepare the incubation tub and then get the eggs out and give the school a clean, give her cage a clean and she can just settle back down and rest and then start feeding her again. But she's holding on tight to those eggs and I'm just so, so excited about that. What a beautiful snake. And Golan Python. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you managed to learn something about these beautiful and Golan Pythons. And um, I hope you enjoyed seeing those eggs as much as we did. And we'll keep you updated on the progress of that incubation. We'll probably incubate those eggs at um, 31.5 degrees Celsius and it'll probably take about 65 days for them to hatch. So we're really looking forward to that and watch out for that video. Uh, we will do a video when those babies start to, ha uh, start to hatch. But yeah guys, thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment below and most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep well. Cheers.